sorry about the last video about not having the right resolution, but uh, it seemed like people liked it, so uh, hopefully it was all right. Um, this video, I want to go through Jordan vs. Viper. I, I would put spec dashboard on for this one because of what I wanted to talk about, which is basically just uh, the build, but it doesn't let me load the replay in Booby for some reason, but I skipped through Dark Age and we're starting in Feudal. Uh, I think Viper is going 22 pop scouts, but Jordan is going 22 pop scouts. Um, that's what Viper's base kind of looks like. Jordan having to split up his wood line. In fact, I'll put it on 75 speed just to make it a little faster. And if I have enough time, I wanted to go through one of my own replays after this. I want to just focus on the different variations after opening up scouts. And basically, this is a fun build because you can basically just kill the other guy with it. Viper's going forward spear with scouts, which is always annoying. I think it's pretty cool to do, especially if they have forward resources. And in the game I played versus someone, I, I went forward spear with scouts because it's it's so annoying to deal with when if you have like a short rush distance or uh, something on a hill, forward berries like Viper has. So it's a scout war. You can see a lot of Jordan scouts are red he gets a good kill there though good micro but he's gonna ooh, ooh, a lot of damage there all that stuff doesn't really matter so much like it okay it matters a lot but for this game in particular i just want to focus on the build and just killing the other guy because it's fun and when i say kill the other guy it's basically just do damage so there's other videos, and I think I had other videos too, that cover kind of the scout opening into archers and stuff like that. So I'm not going to focus too much on like the details. Ranges, blacksmith. Trying to do damage with scouts. Especially if you're going bloodlines, you don't really want to try to take too much damage with scouts, so it's always a uh, decision you have to make. Is it worth it for trying to do something like kill a spear or a vill that you may or may not kill then and taking damage or just preserving the HP for bloodlines later? What I've noticed from better players' games is that they go for that. With their first four scouts, they don't go for the spear that often. They just ignore it. And I always used to go for it. Uh, they both have bloodlines right now. They have a sim similar number of scouts, so they're both doing the same thing. Okay, so here's another theory thing. I like what Viper's doing because he has this gold he has to protect on the hill. And they're both doing the same thing. And if you're both doing the same thing, I like to be, okay, in theory, I like to be defensive. In practice, I don't like it, but the idea is that if they get to your base, you can fight with Vils and you can get maybe the first hit in on a hill, uh, or you have uh, a new unit come out of like your buildings so that now all of a sudden you have another unit and their unit comes out of their building and it has to travel all the way across the map. So that's, you should have a defender's advantage like that way. The only problem is until like a super high level, and even at a super high level, like we'll see, you can still do a lot of damage to the guy if not just outright kill him. So Jordan's bringing everything forward. His scouts have one armor. Fletching just hit, so this is a really good timing. Like, I'm actually surprised how all that lined up. Viper has a tower on a hill, or I mean, a tower by his gold, rather. So let's slow it down. And Jordan gets the hill. 
So this is why it's always scary. And like any map I play, I always think of it as like an arms race. Uh, the first easiest example, I guess, is a water map where there's no hills, you can't wall, and you're just trying to go galleys because water is so important. And you just want to have more galleys and better galley micro. When you start adding in hills and walls and like forward resources and other stuff and back resources, uh, there's different stuff that can happen and you can't just make like pure army because there's like ways to get around that. Like if you have back resources, you can just wall and then all of a sudden they have a lot of army and then you can just get ahead in eco and make something cooler later like knights or cav archer or expo or whatever. But I, the main thing is like in my head, I always like to think of it as an arms race and how can you do as much damage as you can just straight up. And that's why it's scary, because if they have uh, enough units on this hill, then you can do a lot of damage, like, what happens. Uh, after Jordan got Fletching, he got plus one armor for the range units. So this is a pretty, like, standard build. It's like what everybody does. Because it's Jordan, he does it to get, like, max amount of units out. And you can see he could have even done it better. Uh... I think Viper, Viper micro to scouts better at the beginning of Feudal. But scouts with plus one armor are really, really good. I didn't realize how good they were until I messed around with them versus archers with fletching in just like a unit. Uh, I just made like a simple scenario with like eight scouts versus however many archers. But uh, an easy way to think about it is if you have a scout versus archers without fletching, because it's basically the same thing, right? And archers without fletching just don't really do that much damage. Or knights with plus one, because I think knights with plus one armor, um, they have the same armor as a scout. So he takes this tower down, and you can see how Viper's kind of screwed, because this is an important part of the map and whatnot. So it's pretty fun. Like, basically... Uh, you make your scouts, you make your archers. He's got three ranges up, a lot on gold. He's thrown down another stable because he wants to go castle age with knights just to finish it off. Uh, make a lot of stuff. Do something cool with the stuff. Especially if they have a forward resource on a hill. Or a forward gold on a hill, I mean. This works for a lot of maps too. And I see a lot of like 1650-ish boobly players where they don't respect this because when they're playing other 1650 boobly players they don't have a good dark age and feudal age so they they don't have the right amount of units out and scouts and they can't get the upgrades in time so like what i would use to do in this position for jordan is i would or i mean if i was playing in this position where jordan is i would be thinking oh how do i get three tcs up safely and stuff like that and it's kind of boring to play and it's uh i think better to play this way like how to do damage because if you would totally miss, or I would totally miss that they have gold on a hill forward, and I can just make stuff and try to kill them. I think it's better strategically and stuff like that, too. I need to get back to this. I, I'm really bad at doing it, I, and I just don't see hills a lot ever. In fact, in the game I'm going to go over myself, I screw up a lot. There's a hill in front of my base I should have uh, paid more attention to. So you can see how annoying this is too. Viper clicked up faster, but Jordan just has like a lot of stuff and he's just going to delay till he gets his tech up with expo and all that stuff and knights out. And you can see how he's just abusing the map because this gold is forward and Viper has to defend this too. You can see how if it was even a more open map and this was like a, a smaller wood line like cut into half he would have to take this wood line and then this wood and then it's even harder to defend in which case my old 3tc thing would be even worse because i should have been more aggressive to just abuse the map just because the map's so bad it's just hard for them to defend it and hey this is way more fun when you try to just kill the other guy <laughs> Also, if you want to do that 3TC thing, it, it is good to just try to abuse the map a little bit. You don't have to go full out. And if they defend really well, then you can just fall back on eco that way. It's like a much more natural progression than trying to force the 
the three TC thing like up front. You do kind of have to. Okay, so if you have like another sieve, like a Saracen War or something like that, or just like really any sieve where they're just gonna really look to Drush Fast Castle or Expo or whatever, they're they're so slow that they can't really pressure that well. So I think that's why a lot of people like Hunter Wars because there's just so much more stuff you can do. Even though at face value it looks like they're always going Knights, Archer, Expo. Or I mean Scouts, Archer, Expo. And this is what I mean about the arms race. Like before I was thinking, oh, how do I get more Vills in TCs and stuff? And like that's nice to think about, but what's better and when the game, like when I started getting better is how do I get more military out? Because you're, it's like you're walking on thin ice if you're trying to do 3TC here. If you fall behind in military, which is like number one, like don't care about the villagers in this spot for at least for me this is me talking to myself at like 1550 boobly or whatever um you, you really want to just have the arms race to military because if you screw up and they get a hill or something important then you're you're really screwed the 3tc thing works because you get more cav archers later if they're on 1tc if you hold and then the get you just win the game um i'm gonna see how i'm doing on time though Oh, that was only 11 minutes, 30 seconds. So it was good. So I'm going to recap. Jordan just did like a simple build, basically scouts plus one armor, fletching, and then he attacked with the archers and scouts, bloodlines, and then he got plus one armor for the archers after that, like during the attack. Uh, it's always tough to, to tell if you can take down a tower there like he did, but you'll see a lot of other players do this and do the same thing where they can take down a tower, and it's pretty cool. Uh, he still clicked up castle pretty fast. I think it was like 22 or 23 minute click. The timing doesn't matter so much. You can see how Viper hit first, but he wasn't able to hold and didn't have military advantage. So it's not always the best thing to be up first because you're, you're walking, uh, a thin line or whatever. I don't know what the expression is, but it's dangerous, right? Because if they get military advantage and it, like I said before, it's, it's really easy to Ico to idle eco with like even three archers with fletching or five archers with fletching or whatever less than a handful of units basically um and so that's why it's sometimes better to click up later and just use the unit you have effectively and that was kind of the piece i was missing is is how to use the units i had effectively you know, by reading the map and stuff before and i think that's how i should be thinking about stuff and what kind of separates someone who has good eco and knows how the game should flow, but they focus on the wrong stuff at the wrong time. Cause there's a lot that goes on in feudal. It's insanely hard. You have to worry about your eco. You're probably getting raided and you have to hit them at like a certain time when all your upgrades finish, like bloodlines and fletching and all that and having to watch your stuff. And it's, it's really hard. If you do it right though, it makes the rest of the game really easy. Uh, let's go into my game though, which does work with spec dashboard and stuff. So before I was really focused on the numbers as far as like how many scouts you can have when clicking up, like make four scouts click up at 18 minute mark, uh, or make six to seven scouts and click up at like 19 minutes, 45 seconds, and you can get bloodlines that way. The exact numbers don't matter. It's more the idea that you can get way more stuff if you hold out for even like another minute or two, as far as that 18 minute click to 20 minute click to 22 minute click, you just have like way more stuff, right? So it, it goes up like not as a straight line, but it's kind of like a logarithmic thing, if you can imagine it. So it goes like it curves up you hit this sweet spot the longer you can wait where you just get so much stuff in feudal. Um, let's see, this game is versus... Uh, I was... Okay. Yeah, it shows the rating in spec dashboard. So I was happy with this game because it was versus an 1805 and I didn't wall. But this map's so open and actually looking at it now with the fog off, he has a really bad map as well. So it, if you don't wall, what you want in my opinion, is both to have really bad maps, 
because if you both have really good maps, they can lock down their map by walling and you can't. And all of a sudden it just kind of sucks. So you want the maximum penalty for them for having to wall if they want to do it. Since you're not doing it anyway. And I think I was down two sheep. I don't know. Let's go through Dark Age though. Both our Dark Ages were really bad, so it was a really laggy game. And he actually had... Wow, my scouting's really bad. I don't even scout him yet because I was looking for sheep. He had a forward gold and wood that... I think I need to think about more about forward towering, especially since I am almost always have a better Dark Age for the level I'm playing and I should be able to get an advantage some in feudal where I'm like a scout ahead or something and I can try to sneak a tower somewhere I think I should be trying more stuff too because like one thing I've been thinking of is forward range or even defensive range uh, doubt did this against let's improve and he talked about it um when his I think his video it's on his youtube but it's called like road to 2k or something I think and it was the last game he played in it versus Let's Improve. He went Skirm Spear. Because how much does a Skirm cost? Like, I think you get three Skirms for like a scout for food. Yeah, 25 food, I think. So here I do forward scout with the spear. I'm just trying to get in his face as soon as possible. The more I play, the more I kind of like doing this, just because, like I said, I usually have a better eco up front, so I kind of want to realize the advantage and pressure them as soon as possible doing this. And it's fun. You can see how he's a better player. Like, he started out not taking any hits from the spear, and then I got some hits in. But if you just get one hit in with the spear versus scout, I think it's cost effective. All the good players say it's, it's good to do. And... Conversely, if you're the scout player, you don't want to take one hit, especially before bloodlines. Before bloodlines is bad. Uh, and here you can see how my micro is just not that great. And I don't really... I'm focusing too much on eco and getting this range up. And I don't like where these buildings are, but that's kind of separate. You can see how there's something wrong with the way I'm thinking about the game. Because... Like at face value, I'm kind of doing the right thing, but if I was paying attention, I, I just need my units on this hill to defend, really. And like, I, I guarantee you I wasn't paying attention to the hill. Because even when, the first time I watched the replay, I didn't notice it till like, I think around this time. Where the better players will patrol their units, especially uh, in the middle between, between your two bases, they'll usually patrol on a hill. So like you don't even really have to think about it. You can just do it automatically, right? And it's pretty simple. Here I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna go see what he's doing with scouts. He finished that wall, but you can see how now that he has an open map, I'm he's being punished because it's it's hard to wall. Where if if this was more closed and that would have finished locked down the map, it I, that would suck. <laughs> it would suck for me. So now I have all these units over here. If I was like way cooler and was thinking about stuff better, I could have all this stuff over here and try to drop a tower over here while doing this. But I'm not able to do that. Try not to take a hit from the spear, but I take two hits there, I think, which is bad. Doing better than I usually do, because I usually just I, I used to just suicide all the scouts. What this guy is doing is he's going that 18 minute click. So I think he should click up shortly. Yeah, there he goes. 18 minute 44 second. He shouldn't do this on this map because it's so open. If I was better, I could throw up a forward tower or do like I did, I guess, and click up a little later and just have more stuff. So again, I think like the main thing to think about is how do you get army advantage? Because that's really the trick here. He did a faster click. I'm doing a slower click. It's not like 
not thinking about veils or any of that stuff. It's just how do you that arms race? Because it's if someone can get army advantage, it's pretty big because it snowballs really fast. Actually, now that I see it, him going in here is like really dangerous because there's like two hills on the side. He hits Castle Age, so it's good that he had his archers at me when he hit Castle, so you can tell he's a better player. So that hopefully they can turn into Expo. But you can see, because like he has a good amount. This is the amount you usually have when they turn into Expo. So you're going to have to have good micro, and you're going to need a follow-up. And if he had a more closed map, he could throw up two CCs behind this and kind of use this as a glorified rush and just buy himself time to get the TCs up. Uh, a lot trickier on a more open map. Basically, if you want to do it on a more open map, you're, it's an uphill battle and everything else up to that point has to be insanely clean because it's not really the best strategy for the map. Uh, I should say it's not the easiest strategy. Like It depends on how they play and other stuff too, right? But all else being equal, it's not what you're looking to do. I'm glad I put my stuff on the hill finally. And you can see how my micro is not that great, whatever. Okay, now he has bloodlines. And so this is the spot that sucks, right? Because it's starting to even out now. This bill count thing doesn't matter. We're, we both should have more bills, I think, and stuff. But here's like, if I have 19 military to 11 right now, and this is scary because he needs like a critical mass of Cav Archer to clean all this up, basically. Because usually at this point in the game to a little before maybe, Expo are, it, it's the Expo time. That's your window to do damage with the Expo and try to pick off the Cav Archer so they don't get to that critical mass with bloodlines and stuff like that. And especially if once they get Thumb Ring, I mean, it's just, they're really good. So that's really good for me, but that's scary. So it's going to be hard for him. And he's at 21 military to nine. Because you only have like three, four ranges for both people, so like you can't really make up for it. And especially if they drop a TC, then it's like so hard to make up for it. And that's your window to try to do damage, if not outright kill them, uh, before they can support like over four ranges. So I do Siege Workshop. I like when they have forward ranges like this, especially if they're on the bottom of a hill. And if you get military advantage, because it's just it's really hard for them to defend. And this kind of shows why I like doing this too, and it works well on an open map, but I would even do it on a closed map, because it's all about using your units well. You've got the units out, now you can use them well. Uh, and do whatever you want to, and that's kind of fun. Figuring out how to <laughs> do damage is way more fun than figuring out how to not die going 3TC. And Manganel coming out, and then at home for Eco, I think he had archers over here, or Expo. Yeah, so I put a tower there. Um, keeping your wood line efficient and then looking for your next gold because so this gold starts to run out and you can see how like you you can put on so much pressure and this guy's 1805 boobly you, you can put on so much pressure that you're able to like free take this gold without having to put a TC there and you can just make more units and it's just that arms race thing because you're, you're really just trying to win the military battle And I, I just kind of eyed it last time I watched this replay, but the Manganel, one Manganel kills a range in about two game minutes, I think. And so two will kill it in about one minute. So you kind of put them on a timer here. I'm just trying to get ballistics, thumb ring. He had an early ballistics before me, but I just had more stuff. I made one knight. I'm kind of confused. Oh, no. I just, oh, I'm killing my knight. Oh, it's dead. <laughs> I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah, my micro is really bad. But, um. Not sure why I made the knights, because I was surprised I made them before. I think we kind of fought over here and I made a knight. Yeah, I killed that Cav Archer. Yeah, I take a shot by Manganel. I can see my micro is just not that good. But I have a big enough military advantage 30 to 10, where it doesn't matter, luckily. If I was playing like a 1900 or someone, just someone better, basically, the Manganel hit would have been. Extremely bad because it probably the game would be close enough where he would be able to hold And the game's kind of over here like I just have too much military running around and stuff 
uh, he's not going to be able to hold. The early advantage I had when the Cavart just came out of here and they just kind of died is snowballing now because I'm just increasing that advantage by killing him. Oh, uh, what's the other thing? Yeah, so that's the big thing. Again, he went for the early Castle Age click. It was that versus the later click. And it was just slightly later, but it's always a balancing act. The guy who clicked up earlier has to make use of the early expo and kind of try to get, make it worth clicking up earlier for that techie advantage. Versus the guy who clicked up later, you have more units. You have to try to like catch his units coming in the middle of the map. Or do something or idle is equal enough where you can even it out later but before I was thinking about how do I get more vills what you really want is how do I get more units just straight up and hopefully that helps the other thing is just thinking about how you do damage can I drop a tower here instead of going scouts do I want to do like a range with skirms or I'm mean, yeah range with skirms but with spears and just do that I think it's good to try to do different stuff uh, to see how you can do damage because it kind of like gets your brain working as far as like the tactical stuff towers are just so good like I, I think like what's a tower like one six the cost of a castle or something like that so it's almost like you can put up uh like a, a portion of a castle for like a low cost in, in feudal which is like insane i think there's i've noticed it rarely but in high level games where they're going for a risky forward castle on a hill I think it's a lot better just to put a tower down first and then a castle because it, it kind of allows them to put the castle down like i said it doesn't happen often but where you don't have enough time to put a castle down but if you put a tower down and you have enough military to then allow you to put the castle down and, and kind of do it that way like i never see that and it, i've seen it at least once or twice um and i watch a lot of games so it doesn't happen that often but i mean it's something i think people don't consider uh, but the big thing I, was, I keep harping on it again is is everyone knows the build order stuff and I'm starting to realize now too like there's uh, other people have better build order videos out too that I like like uh, Rez and, and Zero and uh, Barbecue Turkman like all those people they're out everywhere and like because I've watched them all um, oh Tato too now but I was still struggling with the game and I had better eco and stuff like that so maybe I was might even be wrong about harping on the Dark Age over and over because that stuff will come and it's way more fun to think tactically about the game and trying to kill the other guy. And I think the little stuff like this on to like how to, uh, when you smoke blood in the water going for the kill, like with towers or just keep making units instead of falling back on TCs is good. And maybe you're already doing this and maybe it's better to like fall back on TCs Ultimately, it's good to do both so you get a perspective from both sides because sometimes the TC thing is going to be better risk reward or you're playing someone at a higher level where they struggle against that type of play versus always trying to go for the kill. Um, or maybe you do the three TC thing too much and too eco-oriented and you need to go for the kill more or try to do more damage at least. Uh, uh, some stuff to think about. Hopefully this video helps and thanks for watching.